Guys, today we'll be rotisserieing a rack of ribs. Super simple, nice foundation to show you the rotisserie. If you can pull this off, which I have no doubt you can, you can pull off just about anything on your rotisserie. Let's get to it. I usually start out cutting several holes in the ribs, um, about every couple, in between every few bones, two or three bones, something like that. It'll make it a whole lot easier to weave in and out onto the rotisserie rod once we get to that part. Uh, you can do it without, but I don't recommend it. One of the main concepts to remember when rotissing is to make sure that your food is centered up on the rod, your spit rod, and also make sure that the food is well attached and that your forks are well attached to the rod. We'll slide this all the way down to the rear fork. You just want to kind of eyeball it, sort of center it up. Um, once we get it, get the other fork on there and get it on the grill, we'll, we'll go ahead and eyeball it again to make sure that we're exactly centered up with the infrared. Once your food is centered and you have the forks on, you really, really want to cinch down on those thumb screws that are on the forks to make sure that your food doesn't start spinning when cooking. All right, now that we have it on the grill and we're able to actually look at everything, you just want to make sure that it's centered up as best as possible um, to the rear infrared burner on your grill just so that it cooks evenly, that's all. Before turning the motor on in the rear infrared, it's a great time to slide a drip pan right underneath the food. And me personally, I'll be filling mine with a 50-50 mixture of apple cider vinegar and apple cider. Now you just have to ignite the rear burner, turn on the motor, and you should have a nice rack of ribs in about 90 minutes. You may be wondering, lid open, lid closed when rotissing. So it turns out you can do either way. It's not a huge deal. It's a little faster with it closed. Um, it's a little crispier and better with it open. The only caveat is if you do a prime rib on your rotisserie, which I highly recommend, do not close the lid any more than about 30 minutes in the very beginning. If you do any longer than that, you'll probably overcook your prime rib and nobody likes that. The fat is rendering, and if you look at it, it is continually self-basting itself in the juices and the fats that it's rendering as it rotisses. That's what makes this so perfect. Even if you're not using a drip pan for all that great flavor, it's a really good idea to put one in when rotisserieing to keep your burners and flame tamers and all that good stuff clean from all the debris and drippings that would happen while cooking. We're at about the 90 minute mark now. As I promised earlier, you can see the, the meat is pulling away from the bone, which is indicating to us that the meat's very tender and juicy. As you can see, the, the renders, it, it's still basting itself. I mean, this is gonna be amazing. It just doesn't get much better, which is why you can easily rotisse a rack of ribs, which we've done today, a whole ham, a whole chicken, even pineapple, and then call your grandmother. Yeah. <laughs>